Alrighty guys, welcome back to another little video. I am so sorry this video has taken so long to come out. Um, to kind of give you guys a little bit of context, this is my birthday build for myself. Um, but I also got a quite amazing birthday gift and, um, yeah. I got to spend the weekend with someone very special to me. Someone who I don't get to spend a lot of time with in person. And so that was, that was a good time. And so then, um, that kind of delayed this whole video, and then I ended up getting rather sick. Um, not COVID, but definitely something respiratory related. So, like, even just talking right now actually kind of hurts. So there will be sections of the video I probably just won't even talk. Um, but yeah, I'm so sorry this video has taken forever to get out. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, but, um, yeah, this one is going to be a fun one, and yeah, this video is hopefully going to be entertaining, so enjoy, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another little video, and um, yeah, today's going to be a special one. Because today we are going to be building what is going to be hopefully my new daily driver for the next year or so. Um, essentially I decided that it was time that I finally upgraded and got a more stable daily driver rig, if that makes sense. And so yeah, let's get into it because this one is going to be kind of ridiculous. Everything I do is ridiculous, what am I talking about? Let's get into it. So let's meet the case for today's build. This is, as you guys can probably tell, not a very large case because this case is actually my N1 eSports case, which is a $45 case that you can buy on Newegg. But let's be honest here, this case is no longer stock. I decided to do something that was going to be a little bit fun. First of all, I sticker bombed the entire basement, as well as put two little easy access holes right there, as well as painted the entire case with a white outside and a pearlescent black outside. Now, it's much easier to actually see on the side panel but guys this thing is freaking gorgeous this was i think three cans of spray paint that i used for the entire project and yeah now obviously i like water cooling there has never been any question about that but the n1 esports case was kind of limited in the water cooling options it only supported a 240 up top and then a 240 down front. So I ended up cutting back the bottom of the case a little bit and then giving myself more access to be able to fit a 360 millimeter radiator. Now, this was one of my birthday presents from me to me. This is a Bauer Tech uh, radiator that is called the Chameleon Fish, and it has a built-in temp sensor. So this thing is going to be the 360 that I'm going to be using in the front of the case, although it's going to be kind of weird mounting this case because of the way that I have to mount it. For the top of the case, I'm going to be running a... This is one of my old radiators that I kind of painted. Um, this thing really does not look the greatest, but it performs very, very well with a couple of EK Vardar fans on them. And then for the front fans, I'm going to be using uh, Arctic P12s that are low, low profile. So we'll be able to fit uh, fans in a push-pull configuration up front. As I showed you guys these two holes, it's because we're going to be uh, putting the reservoir in this one and then the um, outlet on this one. Because for this to actually work, 
you can't have the um, the barbs on the top of the radiator. You have to have them on the bottom. So I needed to do pass-through fittings to essentially get this thing to work the way that I wanted it to. Which is A-OK -okay in my opinion because I think it is going to look absolutely fantastic. And so I wanted to bring you guys along for the journey of building this little rig. Also, I ended up getting myself a second little birthday present. I have been ooing and aahing over this specific graphics card for a long time, and I genuinely never thought that I was going to own one. Because I never thought I was going to have the opportunity to. This is an RX 5700 XT Liquid Devil. This thing looks so good and it performs so well as you can see there's red coolant in it already i did run this card through its paces and uh this is the first time ever having a graphics card that i could get over 9,000 in 3d mark uh time not time spy yeah i think it's time spy um yeah so this is going to be uh vertically mounted right in the front of the case now for cpu ram and motherboard I figured there was really only one option, and that is the X79 green. Now as you guys can see, I painted mine almost completely black, um, even the top of the PCIe um, kind of slots are now black, and I did test everything, it still does work properly. For CPU, I figured the best value for money CPU was the E5-1650V2. And for RAM, I went with 32 gigs of DDR3 ECC registered memory from Micron that should run at 1866. That is what it is rated for, 1866 CL11. So I am hoping that everything is going to perform very well. And um, yeah, building this thing is going to be a pain in the butt, but it's going to be fun. So let's, uh, let's start, shall we? By the way, when these builds start, they just get ridiculous right from the get-go. So, something that I had learned is that the front mounting for the triple radiator really only has four screws exposed. So, I'm going to be just screwing it in from the front, and then mounting all of my fans in the rear. Now, because I gave myself such a small gap, let me turn this so you guys can see it better. Since I gave myself such a small gap, I'm going to have to put the fan on after mounting the radiator, which shouldn't be a big deal because I still have access to the top and bottom of the case. But as you guys can see, that is... That is some tight fanage. And... Yeah, that's gonna honestly probably perform really, really well. I'm not overly concerned about using low profile fans because, I mean, the system is not going to be generating that much heat. Um, an RX 5700 XT is not that hot of a card. I'm also going to be undervolting it, as well as the E5 1650V2 has a 130 watt power limit. And I guarantee we are going to be getting nowhere near close to that, even at 4.2 gigahertz. So I'm going to get these fans screwed in and check back after that. All right, so I have got all of my fans put in and I'm going to be doing a pull configuration. Now, it isn't the best and most optimal way to be doing it, but I think that it'll su uh, it'll supply plenty of airflow. And with as clean as that came out and as clean as that looked, I am actually quite happy. So now I am going to Oof. I'm going to mount the motherboard and put in the IO or the um the PCI Express brackets as well as my Wi-Fi card. And then after that, I will be putting in the next radiator, which is going to go up top. And then I am going to be running the tubing in the bottom because I'm going to be putting in both the reservoir and the second or the uh, second fitting, which is a return fitting to go up to the GPU.
Alright, so I got the front of the case back on. I have the motherboard put in and in place, as well as the front panel connectors that I ran underneath the motherboard. And so, next up is going to be mounting my reservoir. Which is effectively going to be like that. Once I actually can stand it up straight. And it should line up perfectly with the bottom hole on my CPU water block. Also, I need to run the uh, the top uh, CPU pay, uh, cable, as well as probably the motherboard cables before I mount this, because once I do that, that's going to be kind of hard to, to uh, get to. But yeah, so far it is really coming together. And once it's all together, you really won't be able to tell what the green is, so it'll just be pretty much a white, red, and black build. Alright, so I've made a heck of a lot of progress. I ended up getting the tubes and the pump all plumbed up at the bottom of the case. And then I ended up getting all the cables ran because I decided that I wanted to do a post test on this thing before I went any further. So I'm going to do that real quick. Yep, that is why you always do a test boot, because that board, I think, is dead. Um, I literally just had it working, like, a couple weeks ago, and I did do some checking on it. I'm thinking I may have damaged it when putting it in, or when I dropped it in. Um, don't know. But, my second X79 motherboard that I just have lying around is this Keisler one, Kingsler, Kilsler, however the balls you want to pronounce that. And I just post-tested it, it does work, all 32 gigs of RAM are registered, and yeah, that's good, that's fine. So I'm going to essentially redo the entire build with the new motherboard. So yeah, don't get to use my pretty X79 green that I custom painted and everything, but you know Alrighty what, hey, guys. that's alright. Um, I have to interject a little bit here again because I think it's probably important, even though I really don't want to be talking. Um... So, essentially what happened was, now that I've done some additional testing on the motherboard, I had actually damaged some kind of voltage regulation pin or voltage acknowledgement pin because I plug in the motherboard to a good power supply and the motherboard gets absolutely no power whatsoever. Um, I've never had a board die on me like this. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I did to it to cause it to do this, but the day before I had actually recorded the first part of this video, I had done a lot of stress testing on that motherboard with an AIO liquid cooler and an air-cooled graphics card just to make sure that the board was going to be good, and I stress tested it for about 26 hours, and so I knew for a fact the board was working the day before I had started recording this, but now to this day, something's gone on in the motherboard and it just does not receive power anymore no matter what I do, so... I'm guessing I damaged it somewhere along the lines, which is, it's a my fault kind of a thing, but that's because I wasn't being careful enough. I need to be more careful with stuff. That's, that's a, just a tech tuber thing, I guess. You get so used to working with computers that you just kind of forget that they are fragile. Um, luckily, I did have the second X79 motherboard, which I'm going to be moving forward with for this project, and uh, I will say this board has been very reliable for me. Another thing that I probably um, realized is that I never put in the IO shield brackets, which is, yeah, that's kind of my fault, but um, yeah, I digress. Let's get back into it. <sighs> Alright guys, it is the next day, and I ended up doing a lot of troubleshooting last night and trying to get everything up and running. So I wanted to now show you guys the updated of like how the system is coming together, and so far I think it is going to be very, very good. Um, I did make a slight decision that I think it doesn't look the greatest, but I think it is going to pretty much benefit me in the long run just because of how easy it is to work on this thing. So let me show you that. Alright, so as you guys can probably see here, let me get some more light in there. I have the top radiator hooked up into my CPU block into the reservoir, which is uh, right on the floor. And then now you guys can kind of see where my little cheat was. 
I was thinking about doing a hard line tube from there to there, but then it would make it so I'd have to undo this tube behind the graphics card every time I wanted to pull out the graphics card. And so I did this kind of as a temporary measure, but I needed to pull out the graphics card again, and I really liked how easy that was. So that is how it is going to stay mounted. I've got my 8-pin EPS, or my, yeah, my 8-pin EPS connectors coming out, and yeah, so far so good. So I will get her all buttoned up, do some B-roll, and we can get into some benchmarks.